Choosing a right saddle for your road and gravel bike is no easy task when there are so many to choose from. So today I wanna to share six tips for choosing a right bike saddle from shape, padding, materials, price, weight, and other factors. And also share the saddles I currently recommend, which I think are definitely worth shortlisting if you're in the market for a new saddle. Now, over the last 25 odd years of riding bikes, I have tested hundreds of saddles and I've definitely had my share of saddle discomfort in the pursuit of finding the perfect saddle, the holy grail of saddle comfort. So without further ado, let's dive in. Saddles have definitely changed a lot over the years. From the old days of leather saddles like the famous Brooks, which is still a fantastic saddle by the way, to more recent plastic and foam saddles and into the future, with 3D printer saddles like this one here. Thankfully, companies have invested a lot of time, money, and science into developing saddles, so no longer guesswork behind finding the right saddle, there's a lot of science to back up the different shapes and designs available, and finding the right one is now much easier. Your chance of finding a bad saddle is much less than it used to be when I started riding bikes when there were lots of bad saddles on the market. And new bikes these days come with very good saddles from in-house brands, which often work very well. But if it's not working for you, well, time to go shopping. And my best advice for finding that perfect saddle is to try a few different ones. Okay, I know this can be expensive if you go out and buy them all, but quite a few good high quality bike shops offer free saddle trials to let you test different shapes and designs before you commit to buying that new saddle but there's definitely a saddle out there for everyone. It's just a case of finding your perfect saddle. Now, truth be told, human beings aren't redesigned to sit on a skinny saddle like this. Sometimes excessive friction can break down the skin, which can lead to dramatic discomfort and possibly even infection. That's why I personally always reach for some chamois butter before a ride. This cream provides a nice protective barrier between your skin and the shorts and saddle and that can reduce and eliminate the risk of getting any friction down below, which you definitely don't want. Now, I've tested many creams over the years, but this is definitely the best one. The cream is easy to apply and it lasts a very long time as well, giving good protection against sores long into a ride. You can buy it in big tubes and jars like this, and even small sachets as well. And it comes in different versions too. This is my favorite called Eurostyle, gives a nice cool tingling effect when you first apply it, which feels nice, definitely wakes you up. While the Tin Ultra Balm is perfect for long rides. It's a bit thicker, and leaves a nice protective barrier and definitely lasts a very long time. And I'm talking proper all day ride as well. If you wanna try some for yourself, then check out their website at the link down below in the description. And if you wanna buy some through their website, there's a nice juicy 20% discount code for you as well if you order at their website. And it's available at retailers wherever you are based. Right, put it to one side and let's crack on with choosing the right saddle. The shape of a saddle is everything when it comes to finding the right one for you. It needs to be narrow enough for freedom of pedaling and to prevent irritation but wide enough to provide good support. Companies offer saddles in a vast array of shapes and hopefully they often have a fit calculator on their website to pair you with the right saddle. This removes a lot of the guesswork that used to be involved in choosing a saddle when I started riding bikes many, many years ago. Many saddle companies now offer useful advice in choosing the right shape saddle. And shapes are usually determined by your position and fit on the bike whether you're head down and racing in an extreme position or more upright like you are on an endurance bike or a gravel bike. And generally speaking, and it's not a fixed rule here, if you're racing, you might want a shorter, narrower saddle. If you're more upright like you are on an endurance bike or a gravel bike, you might want a wider saddle like that. And you can see a difference in those saddles. It's marginal, but there's a clear difference between the two shapes. Some companies will offer two or three different shapes to suit your position on the bike and also your flexibility, which is something that Physique use to help determine the right saddle for you between the Antares and the Alliante. Here are two examples. So most companies have their own sort of fit calculator based on the science they use to develop and design saddles. So if you have a favorite brand, go to their website 
and see what saddle they recommend for you. And that usually is a good starting point, but lots of people I know and based on my own experience might fall outside of that fit calculator and that's why trying before you buy is so, so important. Next up is saddle width and that's personal to you and me and based around ensuring your sit bones are properly located on a saddle in the key areas here and well supported by the foam and the shape of the saddle. Now finding the right width can be tricky. So this saddle in particular is 143 millimeters. It comes in narrower and wider as well. And I know this saddle is right for me in terms of width because I've been to a bike shop, I've sat on a pressure mapping pad they have which measures your sit bones. And once you know that, you can go shopping for the right saddle width. So most bike shops will have this pad you sit on and it just measures where your sit bones are. And that removes one of the issues around choosing the right saddle. After the shape comes the padding. You need some cushioning for your sit bones. Generally speaking, a lighter saddle aimed at a racing cyclist will have less padding because these experienced cyclists don't actually need that much padding, don't need much support. That's because when you're pushing hard on the pedals, you're indirectly supporting your weight. So there's less weight through your sit bones on the saddle. But if you're sitting more upright, or you're a beginner, a newer cyclist, you probably want and need a bit more padding for your sit bones. But more padding doesn't necessarily mean more comfort. And I have ridden saddles that are really deeply cushioned in the past that actually caused me more discomfort than a firmer saddle. These days, most saddles use a foam padding with ever more complex types of foam and materials used and different densities of foam in different areas. So maybe softer around the nose and firmer around the edges to tune the softness and the support of that foam and cushioning for different riding applications. Generally speaking, you might have a softer nose for when you're riding on the rivet, which is an old term when you literally had a rivet on the nose of a saddle like in the Brooks, because when you're riding head down in the drops, you are sometimes riding just on a tiny section of saddle here. So you want enough padding and support there to not cause you any issues down below. The most exciting technology for me in the saddle market in the last few years is 3D printing like this. So you can take that kind of different zones of padding to the next level and retailer the support in key areas in a more precise and customizable way than the foam we have here. And surely the future of saddles like this is to be able to customize and personalize the padding for you. So you have a saddle that is printed for you and that surely is the next generation of this technology. We're not quite there yet, but I reckon we might be there very soon. But these have been one of the most interesting developments in the saddle market for me in the last 10 years. They really are extremely comfy because of the way that padding and support can be tuned uh, in different areas more precisely and in a better, more effective way than foam padding. Numbness down below has commonly been a complaint for many cyclists, old and new, experienced and beginner. And that's why over the last few years, channels and cutouts like this started appearing on saddles. The idea is simply to help reduce or relieve pressure in that area down below where you have soft, delicate tissues that can lead to numbness and discomfort. So many saddles now offer the option of a channel or a hole like this, or some sort of recess like this. So lots of different versions. Many people swear by them, but they're not for everybody. Although they are very popular these days because most saddles do off them. But the Physic Arione, once a very popular saddle, not as popular anymore, had no channel down the middle. And this is a saddle I rode very happily for many, many years. So it really is a case of trying different saddles. And if you do have issues down below, a channel might work for you. But if you don't have any issues, you might be okay on a regular flat saddle like that one there, or with just a small recess like this one here. But more than a channel, I would personally focus on shape and width first. And then if you still need more comfort, then maybe check out the cutout recess channel option. More expensive doesn't mean more better. I've had the best comfort from the cheapest saddles in the world in the past, and the most expensive saddles, some of the crazy one-piece carbon saddles, have literally caused me a pain in the bottom. So don't think more expensive means a better saddle. The shape, the width, the padding are more important than the price of the saddle. Generally, what more money gets you is a lighter saddle. And despite the focus on comfort, 
weight has always been a focus for improvements for many cyclists and companies. You might not think it's an area you really want to skimp on, but some people will go to great lengths to ride the lightest saddle in the world. And the main difference usually comes down to materials used, both in the base and the rails. So we have metal rails here and carbon rails here. And the carbon rail saddle is quite a bit lighter, but a lot more expensive and definitely a big impact on your bank balance. So whether you need the lower weight of a saddle comes down to your personal preference. But personally speaking, I don't really see the point in trying to save weight on a saddle. Comfort is much more important than weight on such a critical part of the bike. Yeah, if you've got deep pockets, you've got money to spend, then knock yourself out and get a lighter saddle. And there are some crazy light saddles in the world these days. And if they work for you and you've got money for them, then that's fine. But I think most people will be fine with a general, some mid-range, entry-level saddle, like one of these with metal rails, that looks just fine really. I mean, do you really need carbon rails? Well, let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Once you've chosen your new saddle, you are good to go, right? Well, pretty much, yes. But there are two important setup aspects to consider. There's the fore aft, how forwards and backwards it is on the seat post, and also the angle of the saddle in relation to the ground. If you are replacing your saddle with one of a similar shape, you can probably start by putting it on the seat post in the same position and you should be good. But if you're going from say a long saddle to a short nose saddle, the setup will be quite different. And it's worth working with a bike fit specialist here if you have one or your local bike shop offers that service to get your saddle position dialed to make sure you're getting the most from your new saddle. But there are some easy kind of tips you can follow. If you're not sure how to start, then a good tip is just to put the saddle rails in the middle of the seat post in a very neutral position and then adjust from there fore and aft based on feel and see how it works for you. The angle of the saddle is also very important and also very personal too. Generally, I prefer to put a saddle in a very level position with the ground and this stops you sliding forwards if it's nose down or backwards if it's nose up. It gives you nice support when you are pedaling. And most saddles are designed to be in a very level position, not nose down or nose up. But feel free to fine tune the saddle angle to fit your needs and don't be afraid to experiment. It's okay to try different positions on different rides and see what works for you. Don't just slap it on the bike and don't change it. Change the fore aft, change the angle slightly to see what works for you. And when it comes to angle, if you are doing a UCI race, if you're watching this and you're a UCI pro, which you probably aren't, then the UCI rule book even has a rule around the saddle angle and it has to be flat and level with the ground. You can't go like that or like that. Now, let me share my favorite saddles and saddles I highly recommend. Very personal, of course, these saddles might not work for you because as discussed, there are a lot of different factors involved in choosing a saddle. Luckily, I'm quite flexible in terms of, not flexible, I can't touch my toes, but when it comes to riding different saddles, I'm pretty adaptable, but there are saddles I can't do like the SLR, I can't do that one at all. But there are a few saddles I really lean towards, one of which is the short nose saddle from Specialized. They are now being copied by most brands that offer a similar short nose saddle, but I find this on a race bike or even a gravel bike works really well. It gives you plenty of support from the wide base. Uh, the nose doesn't get in the way when you are riding on the drops, really going hammer and tongs. And this one has a nice combination of their 3D printed mirror technology underneath some regular foam padding for a low price point with alloy rails, so price isn't crazy. And that's a saddle I highly recommend. I'll put a link to that down below. One of my favorite saddles of all time right now is this Physique Argo Adaptive. I have this on my Carnago and also in my Crux. I love the shape, I love the broad support, I love the adaptive technology of the 3D printing. It works really well for me. If I'm riding on the nose, plenty of support there. If I'm sitting more upright, good support back there. Really nice saddle. This one had carbon rails just because it's a bit fancy, but I would choose the alloy one just to save a bit of money. Another saddle I really like too is a Physique Alianti. I like the scooped hammock shape. I find that kind of scoop gives you good support to really push against when you're going flat out. Um, so really nice saddle, nice broad support as well, but doesn't interfere when you are riding. 
but if you want a narrower saddle, then the Antares is a better choice. But I generally like a bit more width, a bit more support at the back than a nice narrow nose. And both of these are quite broad, as is the Argo, which shows I like a sort of broad, wider saddle shape than something really narrow. And I'm quite easy on length, both quite long and quite short as well. But I really like the 3D technology. I think this is the best, most interesting change in saddle technology in the last few years. The comfort this offers is just fantastic. It really works well for me. Definitely isn't a gimmick and long-term durability has been good. The only downside is a price, but the price is coming down all the time and will continue to come down as it trickles down to lower price points. So those are probably my three favorite saddles now. I'll put links to those down below. But let me know what saddle you personally prefer by leaving a comment down below. Right, hopefully this video has helped arm you with some useful knowledge around choosing a saddle, shapes, width, materials, and so on, and what to look for when you go shopping for a saddle. But my best advice is to find a good bike shop, one that offers a range of saddles from different brands and models and will help you and spend the time with you and hopefully pair you with the right saddle to give you many years of cycling bliss. Right, that's all for today. Don't forget to check out Chamois Butter at their website down below and a 20% discount code to get yourself riding even more happily than you would without it. And that's all for today. I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.